on a practical level, if I'm a leader listening to this and I want to take a meaningful next step in really understanding not only this model, I want to also understand what, if, what would I do on a practical level not to keep defaulting to command and control, but actually make some space to do that. What are some points of guidance um, that I could take um, tactically or consciously maybe is a better way to ask that. Well, I think there, I think there are a couple of possibilities um, that uh, I was on uh, a webinar last week with David Stone and his team that they're, they're putting into to application immediately. And so I've begun to adopt them. One is um, to, to uh, counsel leaders to ask their team, their, their leadership team, to begin to keep kind of a leadership journal. Um, and I'm not, you know, it doesn't, it's not a long missive. It's, two or three stories or examples a day of where they've seen something happen that is moving things forward. Doesn't have to be a big deal. Um, <clears throat> but if you collect those stories and then gather together to process them, um, you begin to see patterns, new patterns emerge, right? Um, and that's what we're looking for. What are the new things that are emerging? You know. Uh, the other thought um, that I've been playing around with and, and beginning to, to make recommendations around is to intentionally put teams of small teams of people, not big teams, but small teams, three or four uh, together that are uh, from various uh, <clears throat> places in your organization. And um, maybe it's a senior leader uh, who's been around for a long time, knows the business really well, um, it, it could also be someone who uh, is in a decision-making role. And then maybe it's someone that's newer to the organization who has a fresh perspective or someone that's young, just out of college, who's just joined your organization and create space. Say, you know, take a half an hour every day um, for the next week and think about what's possible for us to do and, and create the space so all those voices can be heard. And then you begin to collect those ideas and what comes out of that, that time and you'll, again, begin to see new patterns and possibilities emerge. Um, but leaders have to be intentional about it, and they can't be fearful that that is lost time or unproductive time. In fact, it may become the most productive time um, that they, they create space for. So it, it takes a leader with a fair degree of confidence um, to say, we're going to create some space for this so that we can begin to see uh, what, what we should be paying attention to. Um, I also think, and this is, uh, this is probably the, the most important thing um, for leaders to have in, in their lives right now is uh, really ask yourself a hard question. And the hard question is this, um, do, do I have people um, around me who are telling me the truth? Mm. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I'm watching, I mean, I, you know, I have all kinds of visibility into different windows and I've seen um, leaders who have, you know, either an advisor or another senior member of their team who has called them out, right? And they listen and adjust and move. Then we've seen it happen. We've seen it on the national stage where the, the truth is called out and it gets, you know, defended or diminished or discounted. That's not going to fly in this environment, right? Um, this is not a moment for defensiveness. This is not a moment for, um, you know, trying to be the one in charge all the time. This is the place where leaders have to be willing to say, we don't know, right? We, do, we, there's uncertainty, yeah. um, there's volatility. And so everyone should have the ability to, to say what they see um, and speak truth. We don't always have to agree about it, but we have to create space to, for, for people to bring their varying perspectives in. That's the place of learning, right? Yeah, um, sure. And it's, it's scary space, but it's it where is. we have to go. And I, um, I can't even imagine, uh, you know, what it would be like to be working for a leader right now who is in some sort of delusional environment where they think this is all going to get fixed overnight or they're yeah. not believing or they're behaving in a way that just is totally um, offensive. I, you know, learned of one leader that, you know, on March the 7th, um, as all this was unfolding, his COO said to him, uh, you know, I know you're supposed to leave for on vacation for two weeks. Maybe this isn't the time to go. Um, yeah. And he went anyway mm -hmm. and posted pictures of his 
you know, drinks and dinners and all yeah. this. And I thought that is a tone deafness yeah. uh, in this moment as you're leaving your team of people behind that are um, uh, you're scared and, scared, and yeah. you're gone, right? And you look yeah. like you don't, you know, you think this is, you know, some sort of made up scenario that you're somehow going to have the magical ability to weather that's delusional and yeah. it's 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 really dangerous. frightening dangerous yeah. it's exactly dangerous. right yeah well i love i love this idea around the complexities and so again from a practical takeaway it's almost like it sounds like to me almost like a new cut on on a, like a modern day innovation tournament sure where you can ask your leadership team to just be data collectors of the stories mm -hmm. and the examples of greatness and again i think there's something powerful about that even for future marketing and sales potential in terms of how do we quantify the value we bring to our customers um not alone let alone the people that we're trying to recruit i think there's extra value there second thing i love this idea of creating these small teams with diverse experiences or backgrounds and to that end to see the ideation and brainstorming by positing a very concrete, specific question or theme, sure. and then inviting these teams to simply dialogue and discuss that as yeah. productive time, I would bet there would be a wealth of insights that could lead to new offerings, new products, new practices, new policies, and it would take the, it would be the collective that would be generating that, as opposed to a small group of leaders trying to solve for all of this. And then I think the last thing, as you've described, it's sort of this understanding of you can't your the the most um, evolved leaders will have truth tellers um, surrounding them and to really hold space uh, to do that check-in, that sort of yeah. gut check or accountability check with some truth. And so I think those are really three very practical things people can do to really step into the space, um, as you've described from Stone's work into complexity.